Once upon a time in the town of DeKalb, a baby was born. He was Bobby Dan Davis Blocker and he weighed a whopping 14 pounds. This made him the largest baby ever born in Bowie County, Texas. It was December 10th, 1928, and little did anyone know that this baby would grow up to become a beloved actor known as Dan Blocker. Dan's parents, Ora Shack Blocker and Mary Arizona Blocker, moved their family to O'Donnell, Texas when Dan was still young. Shack, as he was called, used to be a farmer but lost everything during the Great Depression. He managed to scrape enough money together to open a grocery store in their new town. The family lived in a small space at the back of the store, and young Dan helped out with various tasks including carrying groceries to customers' cars. Despite his size, his father used to joke with his friends that he would pay them to hire Dan because the boy was wrecking the store. But Dan's size would soon prove to be an advantage. When Dan Blocker was just 13 years old, he enrolled in the Texas Military Institute. He was a linebacker on their football team and his skills on the field earned him a scholarship to Sol Ross State University. There he plans to study English while continuing to play football. By the time he turned 18, he stood an impressive 6 foot 3 inches and weighed 300 pounds. He would continue to grow and gain weight as he matured into adulthood. Despite his size and athletic prowess, Dan never imagined his life would take a new direction because of his small role in a play. One day, the drama club needed a stagehand strong enough to move heavy dummies used as dead bodies in the production of Arsenic and Old Lace. Dan was the perfect fit for the job. He fitted so well that the drama club convinced him to play the small role of Teddy Brewster, the delusional nephew of the murderous spinster aunts who were the protagonists of the play. Once Dan got a taste of being in the spotlight and feeling the audience's response, he was hooked. He knew he wanted to pursue a career in theater. Although he had turned down offers to play pro football, he was determined to pursue an acting career. He began his journey on stage, performing in summer stock and repertory theater shows. Eventually, he landed a small role in a Broadway production of King Lear. But just as his acting career was taken off, Dan was drafted into the United States Army to fight in the Korean War. He served with distinction, earning a Purple Heart and several other medals and citations. In 1952, the same year he was discharged from the Army as a sergeant, he married Dolphia Parker, whom he had met as a student in college. With a young family to provide for, Dan decided to take a responsible path in life. He returned to college and earned a master's degree in dramatic arts. After graduation, he took a job as a high school English and drama teacher in Sonora, Texas. Later, he taught sixth grade in New Mexico. Each move seems to be taking Dan closer to his destiny. Dan had settled into married life and had found fulfillment in teaching. His love for acting and language had an impact on the children he taught, leaving a positive impression on their lives. He was known to have a heart of gold, and while he could be quick-tempered, he always made sure to apologize and admit when he was wrong. Dan went on to study for his PhD in Dramatic Arts at the University of California, Los Angeles while continuing to teach. To make ends meet, he began auditioning for television roles in the mid-1950s. He landed bit parts in westerns, which were popular at the time, and his love for acting was reignited as he transformed into different characters. Dan appeared in several hit series including Gunsmoke, The Rifleman, Have Gun Will Travel, and Maverick, where he showcased his gift for comedy. Dan even had a recurring role in the short-lived series Cimarron City in 1958. Although the cancellation of the show may have seemed like a disappointment at the time, he would soon realize it was a gift. It was this newfound availability that allowed him to take on the role of a lifetime. Dan had finally made it as an actor in Hollywood. He had landed the role of Haas Cartwright on the popular television series Bonanza. It was a dream come true for any aspiring actor, and Dan knew it. He had worked hard to get here, and he was determined to make the most of it. The role of Haas was demanding and time-consuming, leaving little time for Dan's doctoral studies. So, he made a difficult decision to set aside his academic pursuits and focus on his acting career. It was a sacrifice, but it was worth it. Haas Cartwright was the heartbeat of Bonanza, the soul of the series. 
He was the middle son of a wealthy Nevada rancher and not known for his intelligence, unlike the actor who portrayed him. He was a bit awkward and shy around women and was easy to prank. But Dan brought to life a character filled with love and compassion. Haas was a favorite of viewers, especially the younger audience who could relate to his love for children. Haas was somewhat childlike himself. One trait that Dan and Haas had in common was a strong desire to fight for social justice. Dan's portrayal of Haas in Bonanza won the hearts of viewers worldwide. He was a kind-hearted character, driven by the belief that one should do good whenever possible, inspired by the words of Stephen Grellett. While on the set, Dan formed close friendships with his co-stars Lorne Green and Michael Landon, and his television family became like his real family. They spent long hours together, five days a week during the season, and often hung out off-set. Dan was Michael Landon's best man at his wedding to Lynn No. Despite the demanding schedule of Bonanza, Dan managed to find time to appear in a few movies, including Come Blow Your Horn and Lady in Cement, both of which starred Frank Sinatra. Dan Blocker had already achieved so much in his life. He had become a successful actor, was loved by millions of fans, and had a family he adored. His parents had also moved to California to be closer to him, but the people of O'Donnell, Texas still remember him as their own. His role in Bonanza made him a star, but to the people of O'Donnell, he was still the young boy with his nose in a book. They laughed as they saw him riding a horse and galloping into their living rooms every Sunday night. However, on May 13, 1972, everything changed. Dan went into the hospital for simple gallbladder surgery and no one expected anything to go wrong. But a blood clot in his lung ended his life, leaving behind his wife and four children and a devastated cast and crew. Michael Landon and Lorne Green, who had become Dan's close friends during their time on Bonanza, were heartbroken by his passing. Dan was just 43 years old and at the height of his career, leaving a stunned nation to mourn his loss. In the small town of O'Donnell, Texas, Dan Blocker's memory still lives on. The grocery store where he worked as a teenager may be boarded up, but his name is still proudly displayed in bold letters, and a bright yellow cowboy hat silhouette marks where the entrance once stood. For those who want to learn more about Dan and his beloved character Haas, they need only visit the O'Donnell Heritage Museum. Inside, a room is dedicated to Haas memorabilia, offering a glimpse into the life of the man who brought the character to life. Dan Blocker was not just a famous television star. He was also a loving family man who cherished his wife and children. He worked hard to provide for his family and was always true to his beliefs. Despite his success in Hollywood, Dan lived a modest life, never flaunting his wealth or fame. When Dan passed away, he was laid to rest in an unassuming grave in Woodman Cemetery in DeKalb, Texas. His family plot is marked simply with the name Blocker. The headstone is relatively small and could easily be overlooked in the surrounding grass and dirt. Goodbye to a big man with a big heart, and rest in peace, Dan Blocker.